similar to this where art was on the wall, art photography was on the wall. This is really an important uh, activity uh, throughout for the whole world, is that people should be actively involved in promoting the visual arts of their culture, whatever their culture is. We tend to uh, uh, relate to the visual art culture that is fostered onto us from above as opposed to being involved in creating the culture and taking it up, i.e. we have bought into a top-down concept for visual arts culture instead of a bottom-up, grassroots-up visual arts culture. organization is organization of art collectors and so everybody that joins the organization is an art collector and they have their collection what you're seeing today is just my art collection now I plan to, to leave it to the organization but this is mine it, we have 60 plus members right now and each one has a different collection we don't uh, dictate to our members what they should collect uh, we let everybody do their own thing. See, our interest is getting people to become art collectors because we've seen a real problem in this community and across this country with people he being hesitant to identify themselves as art collectors because they are uh, accepting or have uh, been brainwashed by a concept or definition of art collector that is totally fallacious, but we act on it as if it's real. I got into this work. I don't know if I would call it work. I I think I developed a passion that was pre-existing. Uh, as most of the collectors, we have a common thread, and that is we were looking for images that would reinforce who we are as individuals and as a people. And during the time that I went to college, randomly you would see black art as a poster, and so we would collect a poster and frame that and cherish it or there'd be an exhibition of African art coming through and we capture that. So it was few and far between. So when you discovered a new black artists and you liked the work, the mediums that they were working in, that was a rare and a very fine moment. So individually we were all kind of doing that. And then when Diaspora Rhythms was formed uh, with our five founding members, four founding they provided a platform for other like-minded people to come together and share that passion of collecting and reinforcing who we are as a people by bringing that art into our homes, sharing it with our family and our friends to reinforce and strengthen us as we deal with the world each day.
because I love collecting art and everybody in the organization loves it, the work that we do to support our mission, to support African American artists, and to expose those artists to the community at large, you know, is, 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 is a, a labor of love in that we want to reinforce artists and young artists, that's why we have an extensive youth program, uh, to know that you can have a career as an artist and we will buy and support you, okay? And so you don't have to defer your talent. So we want to make sure that that is known. And for the artists that are out there, they should also be, should be aware of the fact that we're buying and supporting you and we buy at the price point that you put the value on it. And that's very key because when the art world looks at art across ex expanded boundaries, the majority feels they determine who's valued. We want to make sure that we make that determination for our community of who is valued. concept of art collector is antithetical to art seller because the art collector is acquiring things because they think they think that this is very very important thing, uh, items important messages important uh, encapsulations of the culture and they are doing it because they have a, a need one to live with it but also to preserve it and to ensure that it is it goes on to others uh, so the concept of the art collector to me does not involve the concept of selling. We do deaccession, uh, that's a term that they use, that if you have your collection and then all of a sudden that which you have collected before you now no longer feel fits into your collection, then you create a situation where you can allow for it to go into other environments through auction, through sale, and so forth. Now, a person that acquires art with the desire, in the long term or the short term, to sell it is an art dealer. And that is a legitimate definition. It's a legitimate profession. It's a legitimate uh, activity. But the art collector is one that is not thinking nowhere near the, the level of operation about selling the work. They are constantly about acquiring it, preserving it, and passing it on. It is extremely important that Chicago understands the great resource that is here. It's untapped. And I think our efforts is exposing it. And I think when we had our 10 year uh, anniversary last year with our exhibition at the Logan Art Center, did a lot to expose these artists to a broader audience. We were covered by the Huffington Post. And I believe the uh, writer said that he was embarrassed that he did not know that these artists were here and that this quality of work was here. So that really encapsulated our mission. So that spoke to the local community. It also spoke to the national community. And when we first started, we got international recognition when, we, when the organization was first uh, conceived. Uh, Paris Magazine covered Diaspora Rhythms. And so it's important to know that the Harlem Renaissance was not the only thing that happened around a renaissance of art and culture that only happened in New York. It happened in Chicago, and it is still happening in Chicago, and it's rich and it's vibrant and it's active. There's 1,300 plus pieces in my collection. I live with them, I have them all up, I look at them every day. They are like my children, all right? And I make the analogy that if your mother with all of your siblings all standing around and somebody asks your mother, who is your favorite child? She can't answer that question. 
<laughs> that it's impossible where because in, in our society, you know, our images are few and far between. They're doing a better job in the media of showcasing us, but you don't you don't see me on TV. You don't see my complexion on TV as much. So that when I buy the art and I have that and it reinforces us, that's good. But now I'm free of that to explore different venues, different allegorisms of images. And so when you look at abstract art, like Pearlie Taylor or Felicia Grant Preston, and just a mere fact that I can call out those kind of artists is a benefit of being a part of this organization because you learn so much about what the artists, who the artists are, the mediums and the work that they do. So I'm surprised sometimes by how much I've gained, you know, just in association with the organization. So my process is experiential. I see it, if it resonates to me, and I have enough in my pocket, I'm gonna get it. And of course, in our culture, there's always layaway. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a, there's a, they hit it in a lot of different ways. I mean, they're they're educating people about artists. They're educating people about art. They're trying to incorporate younger people into the program of art. Uh, they're also just reaching out to other communities to show that there are artists who who are creating who are people of color. I'm this one of the, this year's select artists for Dives for the Roof. Um, I've also been uh, uh, named one of the top. Artists in Chicago by Chicago Artist Foundation. Uh, what else? I've had a solo show at the Disciple Museum. Uh, I've had numerous solo shows throughout the city. Uh, I've had various politicians and uh, actors and actresses and people of, of note to buy my work. So, yeah, I'm doing what I need to be doing as an artist right now. If that art speaks to you, then it's got to come home with you, you know? And so it's. Um, it's not an expensive habit, but it is a habit that continually satisfies your thirst for knowledge. Because artists are the interpreters of the moment, and collectors are the keepers. The goal of, and you're making reference to the home tours, yes. the goal of home tour is education. Um, I'm not from Chicago, but what I've learned in my 20 plus years living in Chicago is that as you get to know people, they'll meet you anywhere for a beverage or a dinner or lunch, but rarely are you invited to their homes. They just don't, it's just a closed society. Um, and so what we do cuts against that grain. So you have this wonderful collection. What good is it if I'm the only one looking at it? Or the few family members that may come by or friends. So what we do with the home tour, um, Dan Parker, one of our uh, founders, said, you know, the North Side has home tours, you know, Gold Coast and all of that. Why can't we have one? Okay? And so we do have one. So there's nothing that goes on on the north side that is not happening on the south side. Uh, the website is diasporarhythms.net. That's uh, diaspora, which is with an L at the end of it. And rhythms is R-H-Y-T-H-M-S. So diasporarhythms.net. I am, I'm more proud of the fact that the organization is still in existence because it started out with a really, really crazy idea that art collectors, African American art collectors could come together and form an organization to promote art, art collecting in the African diaspora. Nobody had ever thought of that. And, and uh, so for it to still be in existence is, is a, 